welcome back to Hell Hath No Fury, the podcast where we delve into the drags of history and the internet and come up with nuggets of fascinating stories of wicked women that we would rather are not lost to time. I am Kay and this is Elle and we'll be your hosts for the rest of this evening, hopefully, if you stick with us. I hope our mates are perched comfortably with the big light on, ready for some swashbuckling tales of wicked wenches. Each week, we will introduce our episode with a mini story to set the sea before diving deep into the long lost locker of matriarchal history. This week brings you nautical nastiness as we discuss some pretty savvy sea maidens. Mini story this week. Um, I am just going to pop in a little disclaimer before I begin. Uh, This is about a Chinese woman. Whilst I was researching this, there was very little that I actually read that was written in pinyin. So I'm I'm just guessing at the pronunciations here because I don't actually know the tones. So don't at me. (laughs) I'll immediately at you. Yeah, please please don't. I'm I'm, I'm very sensitive. (laughs) Okay, game on. Come on, Correct. give us a mini Correct. story. All right, so uh, my mini story today is about a female pirate by the name of Zhang Yi Sao. So she is considered the first female Chinese pirate. Some people attribute her as being the most powerful or successful pirate in history. She was active in the South China Sea for nine years in the early 19th century. Initially, she'd worked at a brothel um, as a prostitute because, you know, she was born into poverty and what else is a gal to do? And she had a frequent uh, client by the name of Zhang Yi. He was a privateer for uh, the Vietnamese at the time. Um, and he used to see Zhang Yi Sao all the time when she was working in a floating brothel. Um, she knew exactly... Oh, wait, a what? A floating a flo- brothel? Floating brothel, yeah. So, like... Uh, on the sea? Yeah. Lots of seamen, probably. <laughs> You just say seamen? Yeah, well, probably lots of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there was lots of seamen. Oh my god, I think we're already cancelled. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Zhang Yi, uh, he was privateer. He um, ran a fleet called the Red Flag Fleet, which is a bit of a tongue twister, but you don't know how many times I practice saying that out loud. Um, and he, he proposed to her, you know, as, as you do, you fall in love with your little prostitute mistress on the float and sex board and you say hey maybe she was happy being a sex worker a lot of people are well exactly but you know i'm, I'm not here to judge i'm just gonna say a dude was in his 50s she was 26 and he was like yo i'm a pretty successful privateer we bang a lot do you want to just like be me wife and she was like yeah mate why not however she was smart she didn't just be like oh my god yes i will marry you and we will float off in eternal <laughs> bliss together on the sea she was like all right bitch it's what it's gonna be right i want equal share in loot and equal share in status in running the red flag fleet and he was like all right all right all right and she was actually like one of the best things that could have ever happened to him she was so strategically minded she knew exactly what she was doing and they really flourished um you know as a marriage and as pirate people pirate people a pirate couple pirates pirates yeah that's the general (laughs) term (laughs) however it is sad to say that uh the marriage didn't last very long um in 1807 there was a typhoon and he went overboard and died um so that's a bit sad i also um totally just need to correct myself as well because i said that the guy was in his 50s and he wasn't. I don't know where I got that from because he was 40 when he died. So let's just retract that statement. We all know I can't math. I said this last week. <laughs> we all know that I can't math. Leave me alone. Um, but, you know, all all is, is not lost. You know, we shouldn't be too sad because uh, Zhang Yi had adopted um, a son. He basically kidnapped this guy several years prior and he, he showed, like, such good promise as a pirate that Zhang Yi was, like, I'm going to adopt you. And he was like, right, Yordan. And his name is uh, Zhang Bao. Naturally, Zhang Yi Sao married no. Zhang Bao. I knew just a split second before he said it. <laughs> no. Keep oh. it in the family. Keep it in the family. God damn. Oh. So, and you said this was only the 18th century. So this we're talking 
I mean, this is so, early 19th, early 19th century. So um, we're talking 1800s? Yeah, literally 1800s. Not even that long ago. Like, not even that long ago. Yeah, literally over 200 years. But, you know, I mean, she, she, it was pretty smart about to do. It's not like they were re- related by blood. And he was, he was like a grown up. It's not like he was a child or anything. Um, and so basically, what whilst they had been married, Zhang Yi had consolidated multiple pirate crews into one um confederation they actually called it um all these pirates had worked for the vietnamese but then when the vietnamese dynasty fell they were all fighting each other and Zhang yi was kind of like look lads stronger together <laughs> and they were like you know what yeah you're right so um when he died Zhang yi sao inherited command of his confederation it was an uncommon move to make as a widow in her culture but you know she was a bad bitch um, and Zhang Bao was like, yeah, I'm, I'm down with this. And they also got married and they both had power and, you know, good for her. I'd, you know, she had 400 ships known as junks. Um, and between sources on, you know, sources are always going to debate this stuff since 200 years ago, 40,000 to 70,000 pirates at her command. Stop. Yeah. Like, it was vast, it was powerful, and it was merciless. You know, they were, they were fighting with people like the East India company and the actual Qing dynasty and, and the Portuguese and Fuck. you know they, 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 they had um, not just power on the sea as well like it stretched all the way to the land because they, they would extort settlements all across the Pearl River Delta for safe passage and, and protection and she set up like tax offices on land as well where she would basically go to collect her money from the people that she was protecting she went on had one in Macau and Macau was basically um run by the portuguese empire at the time like she just she was just a bad bitch and she absolutely did not give a shit about you know the man or the establishment she was just like yeah i'm, I'm gonna do my thing and I'm, I'm gonna do really really well at it and she did for a few years oh okay for the downfall years. give us yeah. the downfall we're always gonna have the downfall um basically um she negotiated a surrender in 1810 uh, with the Qing dynasty of China, which did allow her and Zhang Bao, her son husband. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I apologise. <clears throat> I'm professional. This allowed Zhang Bao and her husband to avoid prosecution whilst maintaining a significant number of vessels. Like, what the hell? Like, she's, like, pirated all in the, along the South China Sea for years. And it took the Qing Dynasty, the Portuguese Empire, the British Empire, and the Dutch to join forces. They basically, um, uh, there, was, there was one point before the surrender where... Um, Zhang Yi Sao and her son husband Zhang Bao were trapped in um, a bay. The name of the bay has completely escaped me. Tung Tung Bay. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but they basically blockaded them in. At one point, there were over like 90 ships um, that had, had formed this blockade to trap them. And it was over 20 days that this like standoff lasted till the winds changed. Um, and uh, Zhang Yisao and son husband Zhang Bao managed to escape. Like, they, they, they didn't lose um, a single ship throughout all of this. They only lost 40 men, whereas um, the provincial fleet lost three ships and 74 men. Like, Fuck. Yeah, she, she, was, she, was, she was brilliant. But yeah, she was you know, a boss bitch. She, for real, she really was. But uh, of course, the, the tides did begin to turn. The Confederation were falling out of favour. Um, and, you know, basically the, 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 the provincial fleet, they were like, we've had enough. Um, the pirate supply lines became damaged. Their organisation, their skills became limited as, you know, other leaders, I suppose you could call them, kind of wanted more or wanted to go down different paths. Um, so that really shook their foundation that sort of held them all together. Um so yeah, in, in April of 1810, she did surrender along with son husband. Um it but she 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 lived until um 1844, I believe it was. She lived with like 68, 69, really peacefully as well. Like she she returned to Guangdong province um on the land. She owned a gambling house, she she had a son, 
and she just lived out the rest of her life peacefully before dying this little old lady in Nanhai. She was never like was arrested that? or anything? Nope. Her husband as well, Zhang Bao, uh, was actually given status of, I believe he got a colonel. What? Um Basically, as I suppose, like as a privateer work and then for the, the, the Qing dynasty. Nice. So pretty good, good negotiating skills there. I think we should be very proud of her. Absolutely, good for her. Yeah, from, you know, being born in poverty and working on the, the floating sex <clears throat> boat um, to then the floating being sex boat. one of the most powerful women of, of, of the South. I mean, probably the most powerful woman of, of the South China Sea. It sounds um, like it. Yeah, so good for her, man. Good for her. Yeah, a role model. Why don't we learn right? about her in school? I never heard mm-hmm. about her. I'd love to learn about her. We need some, we need some Women's History Month up in this bitch. Yeah, that's our whole podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That's the whole premise of our podcast. <laughs> it is. Yeah. This was but, you know this was a really exciting week for me because um I think so I mean so far which isn't saying a lot because this is the second episode but i've been keeping to <laughs> your face <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah so this week was really exciting for me because we have so many we have mm-hmm. so many female parts to choose from but i went with i'm giving you two for one here i went with two female parts so i think oh yeah. lucky me <laughs> two pirates one podcast one episode don't two. do this no nah. <laughs> So this story comes from um, a book called A General History of Pirates by Captain Charles Johnson, which is largely considered to be a pseudonym for a well-known writer in London at the time. Uh, I don't know who, but somebody does. Um, Don't know who they are either. (laughs) So I'm sure it was, I'm not sure if it was like uncouth to talk about or to write about pirates at the time, um, or if he just always kind of had an ambition to be a captain and this was the best way to get there for him. But I've, I, but I really like, identify with that second one like i'm never going to be a captain so like as i'm telling this tale henceforth i would like you to refer to me only as captain and it is the only thing i will answer to <laughs> what what about captain 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 works what does it have to be captain 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 works El Capitan. for your accent so the pirates that we're talking about feature prominently in the book in such a way that he says the odd incidents of their rambling lives are such that some can be tempted to assume that the complete story is no higher than a novel or a romance, but because it's far far supported by many thousand witnesses, uh, he'll write about it. So to sum up, he's pretty much telling us that you're not going to fucking believe this, but it's true and I have witnesses. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I believe him already. You know, I, I didn't call him a liar. Right. You, you come straight out like <laughs> that. Jeez, that just makes me suspicious. Feels attacked. <laughs> he feels... <laughs> Poor captain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, by the way, this book that I, the history of pirates that I downloaded, <clears throat> I had to download this twice because it's so confusing that I thought like the first file that I downloaded was just corrupted. So I've bought this same book twice, and then the second one, it was still like the kind of nonsense language that he was writing and I was like oh no I have to I have to decrypt this myself <laughs> like, I didn't oh, no. so I bought this book twice so the captain knows what he's doing oh he does I wonder who's getting those royalties <laughs> right we don't know actually it's a pseudonym I'll find out oh yeah oh. <laughs> all right so the first one we're going to talk about the first uh lady is called Mary Reed Mary Reed, mm, according yes. to the good captain, was born to a young English woman whose husband had left on a voyage while she was pregnant. Uh, also a seaman. The husband never comes back and Mary's mother gives birth to a boy. Uh, soon after this, Mary's mother, as the good captain tells us, met with an accident that often begets young women who fail to take a great deal of care. <laughs> so, <laughs> pregnancy. <laughs> she just a pure oh, accident. My she, she fell on a dick. <laughs> I mean, what level of care could you really take in those days? You know, they didn't, they didn't have an awful lot of options. No, <laughs> not much. Not much, by the way, of Basically contraception. Just trying, to, trying to mass. <laughs> Basically trying to mass. And we all know how difficult that can be. Honestly. Like... As I demonstrate. <laughs> oh, so anyway, uh, she secrets herself away with her son, again, heavily pregnant, to have the baby because she doesn't want her husband's family to know for obvious reasons. So she, tells them, she just tells them that she's off visiting friends for a while. It must have been like back in those days. It was kind of common to take like very extended trips to friends. Probably years, I yeah, would say. Yeah, probably considering like 
how long it actually took to travel. Yeah. In those days, it was expected that you would visit with people for a substantial yeah. amount of time. I think so. I think so. Because we're talking like she gives birth to the baby and like a couple of years pass because the son unfortunately dies. Uh, infant mortality rates were quite high back then. Um, so she just kind of had a light bulb moment, the mother did. Um, and after about four years, when her savings had run out, she makes her way back towards the husband's family and uh, thinks to herself, sure, Mary's only a child, I'll dress her up. So the grandmother will sponsor her as a grandson <laughs> for a crown a week. And this works. Oh. It works. Hey, I mean, you know. Girl gotta do what girl gotta do. Good for her. That That's pretty, you know, that's using your noggin. That's that's ec- economical. <laughs> <laughs> she used what she had. <laughs> a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> So it worked for a few years. Mary's just kind of being rolled out every now and again in boys' clothes for the grandmother for a few quid. Um, kind of grotesquely taking the place of her dead brother, which she's um, told about a few years later after she develops what the cap calls sense. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Sense. sense. It, it actually really took me a minute to understand what you'd said there. Yeah. I was like, sense? As in, like, smell? And I was like... Wait, no, that's not a thing. Why would why why would she be able to smell? Why could she shouldn't suddenly <laughs> smell? What sense? Well, of course, young ladies never have sense. No, but she developed it. This has been very well established. It's like it just miraculously appeared within her yeah. sense. Wow, this young lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the grandmother. God, imagine if that's actually how it worked. Yeah, though. just like like it's like just one day wake up and like pff, sense. I become sensible. Oh, okay, so the grandmother dies and the inheritance ceases, obviously. So Mary's mother decides, I'm going to dress her up as a footboy and have her wait on a French lady. So, like, once again, dressing her up as a lad so that she can go and make some money. Like, this, it's it's bleak to think that, like, there was just no hope. There was no hope that Mary's mother could see that, like, that, like, her, her daughter would be in any way, like, helpful to her like growing up do you know, I don't know if that makes sense yeah. but like, I mean like it's sad to think that, that she had to resort to this to make money yeah you know like to keep them I mean to, to, to provide for them yeah I guess like that's really sad or maybe she thought it was like safer in some way because to dress up as a footboy and wait on a French lady as opposed to yeah. presumably like in the 1700s I'm pretty sure around the 1700s right now like presumably there was also jobs that girls could do like i don't know um what i think they there was surely there was like laundries or something like that like yeah i mean she could have been like a, a scullery maid maybe or something like anything because oh, there wasn't yeah, really a childhood back then anyway it was just mm-hmm. kind of like once you could support some kind of labor you did the labor so like to yeah, dress her up go, as go a football boy provide, yeah. maybe she was making more money or maybe she thought it was safer i don't know anyway so she's dressed up as this uh this footboy now and by this time mary was a teenager probably 14 or 15 uh which is essentially being middle-aged back then i'd say oh, um, yeah, after a while she quits the gig she's just fucking tired of waiting on people and has a fiery spirit as sharp as attack and has been raised with any of the typical limitations that are opposed imposed on women back in the day so of course she's off on an adventure before anyone can stop her and she has a fucking time she has a great time she serves on Get the gone, man bitch. of war which is a ship and then carried arms in a regiment of foot. From there, she partook in the regiment of horse, and she earned the esteem the esteem of all of her officers for being such a boss ass bitch. Like she's off to war. She doesn't give a shit. That's pretty awesome. Oh, I bet she had a really dope sword. Bet she had a fucking great sword. Oh yeah, she had a. Fa- oh, I wonder what she called it. I love swords. I wish I could have a sword. Do you know if you do a PhD in Finland, you get a sword? Yes, I heard this. I think yeah. it's Finland anyway. The, or is it Denmark? Could be. It's it's definitely a Scandinavian country, and wouldn't you know as well? If there was ever a country yeah. that was going to give you a sword, it was going to be a Scandinavian country. Like, I just remember when I was little, I was like, I want to go in the Navy, because when you're in the Navy, you get a sword. You do. And you I get grew the up, and I was like, I get seasick. I can't go oh, in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go on the ferry. You can't visit me on the ferry. Yeah, no, legit. Oh. But, you know, I, I, I mean, the dream was there. The, just the sense wasn't. No, there was no sense there, Al. Exactly. No you know, it took me a few years, then I got that sense, and I was like, girl, you can't go in the Navy. You girl. get seasick. <laughs> I mean, a terrible pirate. Yeah, to be fair, probably I would too, though I would still love a sword. <laughs> so after a while, <laughs> uh, while she's in, at war, 
she falls in love with one of her comrades and her duties kind of start to slip so she's doing some of the standard mad stuff people do when they fall in love like following him into armed combat that she has no business being in you know dramatically in love her colleagues at this no stage name. just think she's a bit mental um especially <laughs> especially the guy especially the guy she's in love with he himself he just can't fucking fathom why she's doing this until she sneaks into his tent well. and basically tells him she's actually a woman and then he's like oh well that's kind of ballsy in it yeah like that could have gone completely wrong but like he's i mean just... has he not seen mulan <laughs> Yeah, that went terribly, actually. God. Mm. Like, if she hadn't saved Shang, Shang Li, is it Shang Li? From the avalanche. Then again, if she hadn't saved him, then he wouldn't have been that killer. Never mind. Moving on. It was a good thought. It was a good thought. <laughs> I'm with you. I was yeah. with you. So anyway, at this stage, he's completely flabbergasted, but he's also kind of like, fuck yeah, and accepts that he now has kind of a mistress all to himself, which is virtually unheard of. No one really gets the ride in camp. He's just basically buzzing off his tits. Um, I think something good for him. Right, yeah. But Mary doesn't play that game. She's not all about sex and resists all of his temptations or all of her temptations. Oh, and yes, Mary. And makes him fall in love with her. And now he wants to marry her. And this was the game plan all along. So they marry. She is so smart. With the entire regiment's blessings. Who bring her loads of gifts. What? Yeah. And then they quit the army and they live together for a few years in peace until he dies. You know, oh shit mortality that's a bit sad yeah like they were happy for a little while anyway um, so then Mary decides that she's shit out of luck trying to make money as a woman in housekeeping so she goes back to dressing as a man and joins an army in Holland but Good it's woman. peacetime and that just simply will not do for her uh, god damn peace yeah god damn peace time how's a girl meant to make a living <laughs> so she boards a vessel bound for the West Indies Naturally, this ship is boarded by English pirates who pillage and plunder, but they keep Mary because she's good crack and she speaks English. English. I know, fucking birds. Would you dare be English, though? I mean, <laughs> Would you fucking on. dare? No, bloody <laughs> wouldn't. The pirates... Wouldn't dare be English, mate. <laughs> the pirates are pardoned and settled for a while, but that's not really Mary's jam, so she's soon back out on the seas, uh, getting a good taste for the piracy, and joins with Captain Rickham's crew, and will leave her there. We'll bounce on over to Ireland and talk about Anne Bonny. So around the same time Bring it on. that Mary was assuming the identity of her dead older brother to scam the grandmother, um, over across the Irish Sea in Kinsale, Cork, we are going to have a look at our new bad bitch, Anne Bonny. So the story goes, Anne's father was a lawyer of some prominence. His wife took ill, so she travelled to live with his mother, her mother-in-law. This always confuses me every time I think about it because I'm like, why would you go live with your mother-in-law? Especially back then. But maybe mm. that was... Maybe that was, maybe her, she didn't have any family there. I'm not sure. Yeah. But Sorry, this Who will knows? get more confusing as we go on. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what I'm here for. <laughs> You're not in for an easy ride. <laughs> so anyway, this left him isolated and lonely for a good four or so months. He couldn't handle himself really at this time. He was just going off the deep end pretty much in, with his loneliness. He had a servant girl who was in love with a boy from town. Uh, took care of his house he had a big house he was a lawyer uh, and the boy from town would visit her at work visit her at work she'd been doing the polishing of the cutlery at this time like the silverware and um, in her counting she came up with three missing spoons so she accuses him the boyfriend uh, and he pretends it's somewhat of a game and says that she needs to find the spoons and he runs off and places them somewhere in the house and she cannot find them so she's find the spoon. Yeah, I don't know. Back then, not much to do. There was no Netflix running. I mean, fair, but like, find the spoon. Yeah, and also, like, but back then, like, she's polishing silverware. She's a maid, and you've hidden three freaking silver spoons. Right. It's like, do do you want her to get sacked? Right, like, yeah. Like, what's this? Do you want her to be thrown out on the streets? Like, don't don't bite the hand that feeds. Like, come on. Yeah, like this is supposed to be your girlfriend. What's what's mm-hmm. your fucking anyway? So bad man. He's actually a bit of a bastard, and as soon as the wife is recovered in home, he tells her about the spoons. So he's ratted on the maid about the missing spoons. The maid's been trying to find these spoons. So the wife is furious. She finds them immediately in the maid's mattress where the boy had hidden them and told her where they were. And tells the maid that she's no longer allowed to have a bed. Instead, the wife herself sleeps in the maid's bed that night. And this is where shit gets real. During the night, a bit the fall. husband sneaks like into it. the room and they have a night of passionate sex as the maid. 
as the maid. Stop! <laughs> oh my god, this story has everything. It's like Hollyoaks. <laughs> How fucked up is that? Anyway, so the the wife then um, shocked and appalled, horrified, probably. She gets the mother in law on her side. And they have the maid arrested. See, this is going to get more and more confusing with the mother-in-law because this is so Jeremy Kyle. Right? Yeah, like... yeah. Like the mother-in-law is very, very like in this story. So anyway, the the maid is arrested for the spoons, um, which she's found in the in the maid's possessions. Um, she then breaks up with her skanky cheating husband and goes off to live with his mom. I mean, you've got to really, really hate your kid, hate your husband, and like <laughs> gotta, like, really, like, can't live with the, your mother in law. I thought they go live with your mouth and you. Jeez. But good for her. She should break up with him. He is a skank. Well, yeah, you know what? Girls stick together. That's it. That's it. And you like, know? Yeah. The mom was obviously so not impressed with him. So not impressed. Yeah. So. Mm hmm. <laughs> anyway, so she's off to live, to live with the mom. Um, the maid ends up in prison for a while before the wife is like, mm, it's actually not really her fault. The blame kind of fully lies with the aforementioned skanky husband and she retracts the accusation and it's just in time because the maid is just about to give birth to Anne. Annie! <laughs> right. Here she comes! So in the meantime, the wife herself has also given birth to twins who are still oh living with the mother-in-law who dies and leaves everything to the wife and twins. He is cut out of his ma's will. Oh, wow, she really, really hated she him. She hated him. You've really got to do bad for your, your own mother. Yeah, man. You, maybe she was also like, cheating on it and she's like, fuck this guy. Yeah, like, how dare you? How you are you? your father. <laughs> right. You know? After everything I did, you still turned out like him. Fuck <laughs> So he's pissed, but the wife takes pity on him and gives him a weekly stipend. Uh, and that's really sounder than he deserves, to be honest. Uh, mm. So this continues for about five years, during which time he's totally smitten with his daughter from the maid. He loves her to bits and wants the maid and and to come live with him. But the whole town knows about the maid's girl being illegitimate and an indiscretion. So mm. what is he to do? Only dress Anne up as a boy and pretend that of she's course. a relative's child. What yes. else would you do? All Dressing up your daughter as a boy solves everything <laughs> right. fucking hell why don't we think of that right <laughs> right but the wife is not a fucking idiot she hires someone who discovers easily that Anne is a girl and the maid and the mother uh sorry of uh, is the girl and that the maid is living with them and then cuts the husband off again because he's a cheap bastard so in a fit of rage he moves the maid in publicly and uh, in degree in like degrees over a couple of years loses public favor so when Anne is around 12 he moves the whole family to carolina years past the maid dies and Anne comes into her own fierce personality there's some stories about her growing up um that kind of evidence just how wild she really is including at the age of 13 stabbing a servant and beating a man who assaulted her to either a pulp or death, unsure. She's a bad bitch, and she doesn't give a fuck. Like, well, he assaulted mm -hmm. her, so, you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, he asked for it. That's asking for it. <laughs> that is asking for it. That is asking for it. Okay. <laughs> she was she was totally beautiful, and her father was completely buzzing with this. Um, He wanted to marry her off, uh, based on this virtue alone, to someone with loads of money. Um, but she was like, nah, fuck this. And she marries a young sailor. So she was never oh. going to be controlled. She's never going to be controlled. Um, her father, being the impulsive swine he is, disowns her. And there is some talk of her burning down the plantation uh, that her father lives on in revenge for this. Good. Because you don't cross her. You don't cross Anne. Um, no, you do not. Mm -mm. So the husband go was is gutted thinking he won a, like a jackpot inheritance uh, and he, sh mm -hmm. he ships them off to Providence and here she meets um, this Rackham lad, the pirate from above oh, what's his name again? Sorry, I need to go check my notes uh, Captain Rackham, I never gave another name <laughs> so anyway <laughs> they they run off, she meets Captain Rackham he thinks he's getting a huge inheritance but Anne has burned the plantation down so yeah, everyone's never. in a bit of a mess. Captain Rackham tries to pay the husband to divorce her, which he refuses for some reason, even though he kind of doesn't, he only kind of, he must have been in love with her as well, so like I suppose so, but anyway, he refuses that. So once again, Anne says, fuck this, and runs away with him on his pirate ship under disguise as a man. Because why not? Girl. 
So they're mm-hmm. shacking up, and soon he makes a pit stop in Cuba, where she gives birth before promptly returning to pillage the high seas with him. Don't know what happened to the kid. I think she left him in Cuba. Oh, wow. Well. Poor Bob. Bye. Yeah, right. But nice <laughs> he, can't, he can't go fired in. He's only a baby. No, to like... <laughs> So, I don't give a fuck. So this is no, clearly not. It's like a child. What do I do with it? Yeah, like this doesn't really suit me. Like... <laughs> this doesn't fit me or <laughs> yeah. my needs. I, I don't. I don't want it. I don't. I don't want it. I. I couldn't match. <laughs> so this is roughly how Anne and Mary meet. Both believe in each other to be a man. Anne's disguise is quickly uncovered, given their pit stop off for the birth. So Mary and Rackham are both aware that she's a woman. Uh, at some point after she gives birth, she, Mary, and Rackham steal a ship called the Willem and or the William maybe, and start putting together their own crew. So their special little pirate crew. Crew. They're going about pirating or whatever uh, with their new crew for a while. When Anne, who is described by our fearless captain, uh, much less reserved with sex than Mary, and starts talking to Mary, as believing her to be a young man, uh, and tells her that she fancies her. Oh. Mary's like, hold the fuck up, I'm actually a woman too, before you try and jump on here. And Anne is like, fully don't care, <laughs> still want to jump on. <laughs> and they, they become lovers. Rackham is not cool with Anne taking a lover until she tells him that Mary is actually a woman. And then he's not mentioned anywhere as objecting again, which I feel is an attitude still prominent today. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. 100%. 100%. You know, it's... Like we said last week, some things just never change. That's it. And that's definitely one of them. That's it. So they go along again, pirating for a while, and the pair of them are described as being the most ferocious pirates by both their crew and the survivors of the parties that they attack. They're often described as being the most vocal amongst the crew, crying for blood. They are they are fucking vicious. In drawings, they're yeah, both... They're pretty savage. Yeah, they are. They're savages. That's exactly what they're animals, these two. In drawings, they're often... Um, depicted with bare chests because after they would wound a man they would uh, they would take off their top to let them know that their tops to let them know that they've been killed by a woman just to fuck yeah. his shit up in the last oh moments of his life it's brutal <laughs> like you got beat by a girl yeah like look at my dd which i don't think is generally I, I don't think that that's a bad thing i don't think that the the distinction needs to be made by who's going to beat you a, like a man or a woman but back then no, i think it was not. a big deal so it's just yeah like an added humiliation to a dying man, mm-hmm. a dying That's pirate it. man. It's, it's insult to injury, isn't it? That's it. Like you know, like nowadays, it's like you know, if you're a guy and you get your ass kicked by a girl, it's like right, okay, equal rights, feminism, good. We should but back then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe not good, but you know, back then, of course, inequality as rampant as as it was. Like yeah, it's like got your ass handed to you by a girl. Yeah, like Suck it, bitch. just pure savagery going on here. Like they didn't give a single fuck. They wanted to destroy men from the inside out. That was what <laughs> their point was. And you know what? I'm not. I'm not mad about it because of probably all the shit that they had to endure from men. But like, oh yeah, God, I didn't. I wouldn't want to meet either of these. Oh Jesus, no! Most certainly not. <laughs> Far too soft for that. Far too soft. I'm I'm too squishy. (laughs) Too too squishy. (laughs) At some point um, during their raging, uh, Mary falls for a young sailor. She tells him that she's a woman and they start to hook up. Uh, They have dreams of running away from this life and settling down. And the sailor... Mm. But the sailor is kind of weak. He has beef with another sailor and Mary encourages him to fight. Not really being interested at all in a coward. But then she's also too scared that he will lose and actually challenges the man herself and kills him with either a pistol or a sword. <laughs> so like, if you want a job done, do it yourself. Honestly, he just wants to get shit done. Cut out the middle man. <laughs> oh, so it's um, close to the time that they all get captured and tried for pirating. Mary and Anne were the only members of the crew whose execution has stayed because they're both they both claim to be pregnant. We can't know for sure if this is true for Mary because she dies in prison from a fever not long after they're arrested. Uh, Anne, it's believed, was granted a few stays of execution and may have even survived into her 80s by some reports. Wow. And that's all 80s. we know. Yeah. I mean, living in your 80s back then is... is Huge. Like, big news. Yeah. It's big news, yeah. Like, whether she was executed or not, like... Yeah, even if she was executed in her eighties, like damn it, making it to your eighties. Yeah, I think wow. I think there's a grave somewhere as well. That is insane. We need to find the grave. We need to find the grave. Yeah, 
I need to find this bisexual pirate. (laughs) (laughs) Give her the respect that she finally deserves, having been lost to history once again. Mm -hmm. Both of them. That's mad. I can't believe she she lived to be in her 80s. That's absolutely insane. Isn't it? Like, wow. I'm very impressed by that. Yeah. I love that, Like, like... I love that like they've car- like they've obviously grown up without this idea of like gender norms so like yes. they do not care they will dress up as a man and do whatever the fuck they want to do and they f- I feel like they they felt freer because of the childhood that they had not being confined to their gender role I completely completely agree like the, their entire childhood was not conforming to societal expectations of gender because they were being you know basically raised as as the agenda that they weren't yeah you know that they were basically living as boys yeah you like know they grew so up knowing that this thing was what, possible what, so, yes they're gonna grow up exactly they're gonna grow up you know into women being like well how come you know I, i've been doing this shit for like x amount of years now just because i wear a dress it means i can't yeah yeah good for them good for them i love yeah. the cur- i love the courage that it gave them to like step outside of that box or whatever. Oh my god, completely. And like mm-hmm. they both just kind of they wanted things and they didn't they didn't pause and think I shouldn't really have that thing. They just went and fucking took it. Yeah, good for them. Good for them. Like, Not always a great thing cuz they're pirates and viciously violent, but yeah, they did some awful things, mm. but um, if that energy had been channeled elsewhere. Yeah. You know, who knows who knows it, how far along we'd that... be. As a society. Exactly, you know, it's that thing of, you know, put your mind uh, to it and you can do anything or, you know, they just did the wrong things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but of course, yeah. Yeah. But I love that story. I love no, that they're fantastic. like boss really enjoyed that. I've, I've definitely heard of them both before. I know, I've definitely um, told you about them both before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've definitely cropped up in like other stuff I've read as well. I went through a bit of a phase recently. I watched all the Pirates of the Caribbean films. Did you? Did you enjoy them? Yeah. yeah. I'd only ever seen the first three. Mm-hmm. I like the first one. The second one was meh. thought th- the third one was absolutely terrible. Didn't bother watching any of the others up until recently. They're quite good. And I watched, I totally binged them and I, I thought they were terrible. Did but you? Okay, fair enough. I ended up Googling Pirates, you know, the way you're watching oh, something. Yeah. It's like, I don't know enough about this. And you Google and you read for hours and hours and hours instead of actually watching the thing. So I was reading about like the golden age of piracy and, you know, these infamous notorious pirates like Blackbeard and stuff. And they, their names definitely popped up in, in numerous articles. Oh, good. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad they get a shout read. in. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't, I mean, I didn't know half of what you just told me, but um, their names definitely cropped up. So I'm, I'm, I thoroughly enjoyed learning more about them. Excellent. Well, let me tell you, it wasn't an easy story to put together. Like that book, I'll give you that book. I, although I got it on Kindle, I'll show you next time you're next time I see you in person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> when I finally get that new passport. Oh yeah, thank God. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's literally like a gibberish trying to get that story out. I was like, I tried to translate it. I'm sure, half of that story might not even be true, depending on how I translated yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, we, we don't present absolutely everything that we, we say on this as being fact, because the fact is the things that we're discussing happened so long ago. You could never sources know. Sources always vary anyway. Yeah. So, you know, a little little bit of sprinkling in there for entertainment, but we try absolutely. it. Absolutely. Creative liberties. the best we can on factual events. That's it. Well, this has been a fascinating week. I'm so glad I know about your pirate lady. Yeah, I know. I loved learning about my pirate lady too. Yeah, I, like... won't be, I won't even try and say her name, but like, what a badass! <laughs> what a badass! Oh, I've got to tell you, there is so much that I cut out of that story. To be fair, like numerous other people, she was involved with purely because, as I said, I hardly came across anything in pinion, and I didn't want to be butchering. Any fair names, enough. Fair so... enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, I, th- I thoroughly enjoyed that because, as well, um, with it being like Guangdong Province. You know where where she basically was. That that's where I lived when I lived in China. Oh, really? So all, all these places, places that I've I've visited or I've been to. So like, yeah, that 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 was pretty cool. It's it's like I, I live here and we've got our bad bitch from last week, and then I moved to China and we've got that bad pirate bitch there. Like, it's like I'm just attracted to places of bad bitches. I feel like I've said bad bitch quite a lot. Or alternative theory. I'm a bad bitch. No, yeah, but no. <laughs> but they're actually just everywhere, but don't get the look in that they deserve. That's probably more correct. Right. Yeah. It's more yeah. time, more time for the bad bitches. 
thanks for joining us again this week if you have please do be sure to give us um a review on apple podcasts uh, or wherever you listen to your podcasts um spotify i don't know if can you review on spotify i don't think so um i don't actually know considering spotify is actually where i listen to my podcast yes um i don't know well if you can do we should probably find that review next time that would be super helpful. Um, you can yeah. find us on Twitter and Instagram at Hell Hath No Fury Pod. Um, sorry, Hell Hath No Fury Pod on Instagram or Pod Hell Hath on Twitter. Hit us up. Um, it'd be nice to it'd be nice to speak to some people and see what you guys think. Any feedback is always welcome. Yeah, of course. You know, we, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to interact from you. At the end of the day, we do this because we love it, but you guys have to listen to it. So <laughs> next week is my turn for the little story and it's Elle's turn for the big story. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Drum roll, please. And it's aliens. Oh, <gasps> aliens. Oh, yes. Let's get oh, it. Oh, that's oh, going to be fab. Oh, oh that's going to be an excellent week. Oh, that is exciting. Oh, oh, Reddit is going to get it hard. Reddit's getting this it. Week. <laughs> 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 okay, we should sign off before this gets even weirder. <laughs> yeah, we will certainly should. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Make good choices. Be safe. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.